living with or even married to a psychopath? Well, according to forensic psychologist Kerry Danes, between 1 and 3% of people are psychopaths. Well, that means that if you have 100 Facebook friends, statistically, you know one. But how do you spot the signs? And what is a psychopath? Kerry, who's worked with some of Britain's most notorious criminals, is uh, here to tell us now. So just explain your job. What do you do for a living? I'm a forensic psychologist and have been for the last ooh, nearly 20 years. So I work with criminals, basically. Uh, not only criminals, I also work with the family law courts. So I work with people who are shoplifters all the way to serial killers. It's literally all in a day's work. OK, and what do you do with them? What is your job when you're there with them? Lots of different things. I assess them in terms of what is their risk. Will they do it again? Um, should somebody have their children in their care? Um, I do court reports. I do reports for social services. Right. You know, it's a pretty varied job. So, you, so I mean, the reason I ask you that question is because you are very qualified. You're highly qualified. And, uh, and, and the, the, the question, is there a psycho in your life? It's actually terrifying. And you say, oh, you know, so don't worry, if it's quite, quite, quite light-hearted. It doesn't it seem is, much a... about that question that's light-hearted. <laughs> it's a light-hearted and humorous read about psychopaths, believe it or not, because it could be a very frightening subject, and I don't want to frighten anybody. Mm. We believe that between 1% and 3% of the general population are psychopaths. But do remember, that still leaves 97% of the population what, that are quite what, nice. What is a psychopath, then? Well, I think it's important to say what is a psychopath not, because people, as soon as you say the word psycho, and we use it every day, don't we, um, they think about Norman Bates in the film Psycho. The Hitchcock. So they think of somebody with a granny wig and a big knife. That's not at all what a psychopath is. A psychopath is not mentally ill. A psychopath is somebody who um, is a psychopath for life, unfortunately, and they don't have the same capacity as other people to feel emotions. So this is, so that it doesn't mean that all psychopaths lead a life of crime necessarily. No. Some psychopaths function every day in life. So how, how do they manifest themselves then? Psychopaths are uniquely equipped for a life of crime, but they're also uniquely equipped for other areas. Uh, media, politics, big business. A lot of psychopaths are very, very successful. All right. So, so <laughs> if you are working with someone in media, <laughs> I'm sure you know a few, Philip. For instance, who is a psychopath? Then what would they? What would they go? All these names going through my head now. <laughs> what would they be like? What would you spot? Right. Well, a psychopath tends to be very, very grandiose. They usually have a pocket full of dreams. They've got all kinds of big ideas and they think they're somebody very, very special indeed. So I'm sure that rings quite a few bells for okay. you. And, and continuing. <laughs> and they're also incredibly charming. They're very good at mimicking emotions. They don't actually have them themselves, but they're very good at mimicking other people's emotions. So they're very good at drawing people into them. It really can be like moths to a flame. Mm. So these are people who can really hold a TV studio, they can hold people in the palms of their hands. You're not, I don't think you are at well, all. Well, the thing is, the question <laughs> that you, you say that if you, th if someone thinks, am I a psychopath, then you're not because you wouldn't think about asking that question. If you're worried that you're a psychopath, chances are that you really are because you wouldn't be anxious about it. Psychopaths don't suffer from anxiety yeah. like the rest of us do. Well, then there is a big difference then in that case between someone who has personality traits mm. uh, and some of them not particularly nice personality personality traits, and someone who then flicks the switch and turns into something terrifying and dangerous. Yeah. We know that actually psychopathy is a continuum. So there's a sliding scale of psychopathy. And so we might all have psychopathic traits to some degree. But somebody who's a psychopath has a high degree of those traits, a lot of those traits, and has them consistently in various different areas of their life. So that's how you can differentiate between somebody who So because is... you've got those traits does not mean to say that that person who lives next door, or that person who you're married to, or going out with, or is a friend of yours, will necessarily be a danger to you. No, not necessarily. As I say, they there are criminal psychopaths. Um, and we do know that criminal psychopaths are more likely to be violent and instrumentally violent. But there are lots of other ways in which people can be disrespectful well, to each other. For example, in your book, this is what it says, the behaviour of your next-door neighbour as an example of psychopathic behaviour. You've got a sort of a list of things that could seem 
be seen as psychopathic. So this is uh, always popping around with a tray of home-baked cupcakes. Well, that's not yeah, psychopathic, psychopathic at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not at all. Has always got one eye on your biscuit tin. That's to show that actually at one end of this ruler, yeah. there might be somebody who's really quite angelic. Right. Uh, and then on the other side of the scale is somebody who... Well, you say someone who persistently parks in front of your driveway is having an affair with your partner, lets themselves into your house. Your dog is found dead. Two weeks later, so is your cat. That's pretty psychopathic, isn't it? Well, yes, I would say <laughs> that that was unsociable behaviour. Definitely um, unsociable uh, uh, behaviour. You say at the end, the missing bodies are under the patio. Yeah, that's at the real far end of the scale. I think but what... to be fair, without having sort of a tick list there, I think if I was to look over the fence and go, oh, that's a very new patio that they've just dug there, and suspected bodies, I wouldn't go, should I ring the police or should I just have a look and see if it's on the list? Oh, it's on the list. Oh, yeah, they were in here yesterday night. asking think, for this. I think if you looked over the fence, saw a new patio and immediately thought, oh, dead bodies, I'd be more concerned about you, Holly. Really? Really? <laughs> mm. So you, uh, you've also got, how, uh, how psychopathic are you? You're in a queue and someone pushes in front of you. Do you tut to yourself, say nothing, grab them by the scruff of the neck, tell them to push off, start chatting to them like a long-lost friend? Do you think the country would be better with you running it? Maybe. Yes. No. So if you answer A's, then you're pretty normal. If you answer B's, you're bordering. But if you answer C's, then you're certainly oversensitive, you say. Yes, you're a bit of a, a, a doormat rather than a psychopath, which is the other end of the spectrum, isn't it? I think if you, um, if somebody pushes in front of you in a queue and you immediately grab them by the scruff of the neck, then you've got very poor behavioural controls, yeah. and that's certainly a sign of a psychopath. Well, there you go. This is the this is the book. Is there a psycho in your life? Uh, thank you very much indeed for coming in today. Thank you that's very much. Thank you. That's what it looks like. Still to come.